welcome back to a new post today and today itself uh, the supreme court has come out with a big statement regarding uh, the assets declaration of assets and liabilities by the candidates who file the candidature uh, who have to do so during the filing of the candidature according to the representation of people act now we know that we have election laws in the country uh, which determine the qualification disqualification uh, the submission of details regarding the candidates etc and how the election actually goes about so these two laws are your representation of people act 1950 uh, and the representation of uh, people act 1951 the the 1951 act deals with the electioneering the candidature the filing of the nomination uh, the recognition of political parties derecognition etc and one of the provision of this rpa act 1951 deals with the candidates who have to file the nomination papers to the returning officer now what all do they have to file and uh, supreme court has now come up with the state uh, so one of the uh, uh, i'm sorry one of the uh, uh, the details that they have to file is about the assets like abilities and any uh, criminal uh, cases if they have on them so these are the details that the candidates have to file but uh, supreme court comes out today with a statement that there is no absolute right on the voters to know each and everything uh, regarding the assets of the candidates and let's have a quick review about this uh, because this is uh, one of the important features with regard to free and fair and open elections and also how we can know about our representatives who make law on behalf of us and represent their constituency and the people in the country so the supreme court observed that the voters did not have an absolute right to know each and every asset of the candidates who fight elections and this was the uh, the word, the uh, outcome of a case which the supreme court is, uh, is deciding uh, about an mp uh, an mla from arunachal pradesh so the supreme court said that the candidates contesting election need not disclose each and every movable property that is owned by them or their dependents let me tell you that even the properties and the assets of the spouses uh, and the dependents have to be filed so the apex court said that the candidates need not disclose information about the property that is uh, that need to disclose uh, need to disclose information about the property that is only of substantial value and reflects a very luxurious lifestyle it is not the absolute right of the voter to dwell deep into the private life of a candidate this was what the supreme court said and each and every disclosure has to be of such nature that it will impact the voting the top court said that the candidates have the right to privacy this is a very very important noting made by the supreme court regarding the matters which are irrelevant to the candidature for the public office it is also necessary that the candidates declare uh, it's not necessary for the candidates to declare each and every item item of the movable property that he or his dependent family members own such as clothing shoes crockery stationery furniture etc unless the same is of such a value that constitute a sizable asset and in itself reflect upon the candidature in terms of his lifestyle and require it to be disclosed this is what the top court said now the supreme court direction came uh, as it upheld the election of an independent mla uh, koriko kri from the tezu constituency in arunachal pradesh in 2019 setting aside a gohati high court order that had declared his election anand and void so the high court had declared the election of kri from tezu as null and void after hearing a petition filed by the congress candidate uh, challenging the declaration of 2019 assembly election result so he the petitioner alleges that kri made very false declarations in his election nomination paper by not disclosing that he was in occupation of a government accommodation in the petition kri opponent had claimed that the mla exercised undue influence by not disclosing even three vehicles of his uh, wife and son while filing his nomination the petitioner also claimed that kri did not submit due uh, no due certificate from the concerned department for the rent electricity charges water charges and also the telephone charges of the government accommodation now the ec uh, uh, in a in a next case uh, just similar to this the ec sort of verification 
uh, regarding the union minister Rajiv Chandrasekhar who is filing his candidature from the Tiruvannantapuram constituency. He filed an affidavit with 680 rupees taxable income and therefore there was a congress a complaint against the BJP uh, candidate Chandrasekhar who has been a union minister for giving false information in the election affidavit. Now a complaint has been filed by the congress to the EC and the EC in turn asked the central board of direct taxes to verify the poll affidavit submitted by the union minister and the BJP candidate from Thiruvananthapuram Rajiv Chandrasekhar. He declared Rs. 680 as taxable income for 2021 and 22. That's, that's what they say. Now, the Congress has submitted a complaint to the EC for giving, uh, for alleging that he had given false information about his financial status in the election affidavit and alleging infirmities in the values of the assets, investments, income. The party said that this was a clear violation of the Representation of People Act 1951, which governs all these details and also the Indian Penal Code. Now, as per the RPA 1951 rules, the candidates who file their nomination from every constituency, from every political party, and even independence himself as to have to find a uh, file details of the taxable income movable immobile assets and liabilities they also are required to share some financial details about the spouses as well it is the returning officer now who say, takes in all these details and he checks all the columns in the affidavit and uploads them on the website the ro however cannot verify the details that are mentioned in the affidavit and in case there is any discrepancy in the affidavit a petition has to be filed only after polls in the court adding that the supreme court has acted now this time before the polls uh, since it had received a complaint now what all do the candidates have to file so declaration of assets liabilities individuals contesting ele uh, elections have to file in an affidavit declaring any criminal records uh, criminal past cases etc assets liabilities education qualification as well and after getting elected the MPs have to file the same declaration of assets and liabilities with the speaker of the Lok Sabha and the chairman of the Rajya Sabha now these declarations have to be made by the MPs within 90 days of the taking seats in the parliament and a few government reports uh, keeping in mind the money power in election and also during the term of office the mismatch between the last filed assets and the next filed assets that do, uh, they do many of the committees have uh, said that there should be state funding of elections so that the candidates work only on the basis of governance and do not involve in corruption some of the uh, committees that have called for state funding of elections so that there is no use of money power and also accumulation of undue assets and properties disproportionate to what they uh, hold the status or their office. So some of the com uh, committees that have spoken about state funded elections are the Indrajit Gupta Committee on State Funding of Elections in 1998, you have the Law Commission Report on the Reform of Electoral Laws in 1999, National Commission for the Review of the Working of the Constitution in 2001 and the two second uh, ARC in 2008. So this is all about what are the information that has to be disclosed by a candidate date much before the election while just filing his nomination papers to the returning officer and let me tell you that the RO cannot do anything and verify whether these are true facts if there is any discrepancy only this can be decided after the polls are done and the case is decided in the court and if they file that there has been any false affidavit given then the person can be disqualified as well so these are some of the points that I wanted to share with you all as we are already in the election season and you should know how the elections actually go about or what are the technicalities and how do they function in the country uh, I hope these few points were really helpful to you all if you please do like share and subscribe and don't forget to comment at the end of the video and i shall see you in my next post until then it's very happy learning